Hello everybody, welcome to our online feast. Did you miss us last week? Well, of course, that was Easter Sunday and all of us were invited to join online our Holy Week recollection entitled Rescued. I pray that you were blessed by it and if ever you were not able to join us last week, well, we welcome you now. This is Feast Valle Verde, your family where love overflows. And as your builder, I'd like to greet all of you alongside with all the leaders and servants of Feast Valle Verde, a happy, happy Easter. The Lord is alive. Amen. Jesus is alive and he is inviting you and me to a new life with him today. Friends, before we begin with everything that we're going to do today, I'd just like to request, could you please press the, the like and the heart button below? <laughs> yeah. And please tag a person or share this video so that more and more people will be blessed today. Friends, thank you for joining us uh, today. This is a very special day because it is Divine Mercy Sunday. For those who are devotees of the three o'clock habit, then you know what this is. It is a devotion towards the divine mercy. God is merciful. God is loving. And he sent his only son to come to us just to save us and to bring us new life. And so brothers and sisters, I'd like to invite you that um, to celebrate today his mercy. Normally, if you have your uh, confession and communion today, you'll have a plenary indulgence. Uh, no, I don't plenary indulgence. That's, that's basically a grace wherein um, all our sins are forgiven alongside with punishment. No? The, the, the real point of the, of the devotion is that uh, the Lord is ready to accept us, ready to, to forgive us, ready to bring us towards his heart. And so I'd like to encourage you, brothers and sisters, even if ever you're still in your Lent, if ever you're still in Holy Week, maybe some of you are in a Good Friday, I'd like to give you a message of hope. The Lord is inviting you to Easter Sunday. Brothers and sisters, you just need to trust him. Kaya nga nakalagay dun sa image ng Divine Mercy, di ba? Below, Jesus I trust in you. And so brothers and sisters, I'd like to invite you to trust the Lord much more today. Much more than an intellectual understanding. Go to the heart. Alam mo yun? Puso. Puso ang paniniwala natin kay Lord. Katulad nga itong kwento na ito. Naalala ko yung kwento. Um, tungkol sa isang baboy at saka isang manok. <laughs> a chicken and a pig. They were just walking along and then suddenly they, they got to know about the COVID virus and they got to know the plight of the human race and hirap na hirap ang mga tao. So sabi nila, ay, sige, contribute tayo. Sige, tulong tayo, tulong tayo. Siyempre, napaka-enthusiastic nito. Manok. Bakit? Kasi ang bibigay niya lang naman, itlog. <laughs> Yung baboy, medyo nag-isip-isip. Bakit? Kasi sabi niya, teka lang, buhay ko yung ibibigay ko. Grabe, no? Full commitment. Full commitment. And friends, I think that's the invitation of the Lord for all of us. That we don't just be like the chicken that just thinks of our faith or just gives a little, a certain percentage to faith. But the Lord is inviting us to, to allow Him to enter our lives 100%. All right, alongside as he gave him his life to us, he's also inviting us to a full experience of his love. Hindi isip lang, puso rin. Friends, are you ready to experience the Lord? Are you ready to take him more seriously? Not here, but more so here. To be able to experience his mercy and experience his love. I'd like to invite you, brothers and sisters. I don't know how you are right now. I don't know your story. I don't know your difficulties right now. But one thing is for sure. I know that God knows. I know that his heart only has the good for all of us um, in, in heart, in his heart. And so, brothers and sisters, come to the Lord. If you haven't yet um, come to the Lord that much, maybe you will say you're not that religious. Well, that's okay. That's okay. The important thing is that you get to know Him personally. And that will be a start of a great and wonderful adventure with the Lord. Brothers and sisters, are you ready to experience the Lord today? We start off with a worship session. And so we'd like to invite you in whatever way, just express yourself. That means what? Sing with us if ever, or just say your prayer out loud. You can out loud or you can open your hands or raise your hands. I don't know. But the point here is this. 
in whatever way you would like to express your current relationship with Jesus, then do it. Allow this time of worship to prepare you to listen to his word and to experience his love for you today. A wonderful day to everyone. I'm Marco Kirkwoods, and I will be joining you today in our worship and in prayer. But first of all, I would like to encourage you to like and share this FB Live video to your friends, to your families, to your office mates. Do it right now because you wouldn't want them to miss out on the blessings that will be poured out through this video. You wouldn't want them to miss out on the message that Brother J. Ugawin will be imparting to you this, this day. And um, for as a community, feel free to comment down below to share your thoughts, to share your reflections, your prayers. But as one, we are still a community kahit we are apart, kahit we are on different locations. Right now, we are gathered in one church here in the FB Live video. Brothers and sisters, if you're sitting on a, uh, beside a person or if you're all alone with God, I invite you to close your eyes smile inhale and then greet that person beside your great god and say happy easter happy easter to everyone yes we are still celebrating the easter season and easter ce celebration is actually for 50 days wow five zero 50 days and why is that ask me why why because it is the greatest celebration of our Catholic faith. It is the greatest celebration of the church. It is greater than the Pentecost. It is greater than the Holy Week. It is even greater than the All Saints Day, the All Souls Day. And most especially, it is greater and bigger than the Christmas season. Uh, usually, akala natin, Christmas season is the most important celebration of the Catholic faith. But no. You know why? Ask me why again. Why? It is because anyone can be born in a stable. Anyone can suffer or be scourged. Anyone can die on a cruci on a, or crucified on a cross. Anyone can, can build the church. But it is only Jesus Christ who resurrected from the dead. It is only Jesus Christ who defeated death and rose from it. It is only Jesus who is the living God. And without Him rising from the dead, our faith would be nothing. This is the foundation of our faith. The church has been built from this belief that Jesus is alive. And we know truly for ourselves that Jesus is alive. But, oh, baka meron iba sa inyo. You're asking, Brother Mark, but how about Lazarus? Lazarus resurrected from the dead din, di ba? But haha, -ha, Lazarus resurrected through Jesus Christ. It was through Jesus that he rose from the dead. And that is the message of Jesus in, through, uh, during the Easter season. That wherever, whatever you're, you are right now, wherever you might be, he's meeting you right now. You might be at your down moment, your rock bottom. You might be sick right now. You might be one of our frontliners. You might be wishing that you were dead. But Jesus, the promise of God, never fails. And His promise is your resurrection. You will rise from it all. You will rise from that suffering. You will rise from that problem that you have right now. And if you're afflicted with the COVID-19 or impacted by COVID-19 on this pandemic, I assure you that hope is there that Jesus will raise you up. And I invite you to sing this song. This song that describes all creation rising up and singing the glory of God. Everything that has breath Sing his hallelujah because Jesus is alive. Jesus rose from the dead and it is worth celebrating. And it, as it is said in Psalms chapter 9 verse 1 to 2, I will praise you Lord with all my heart. 
I will tell of all the wonderful things you have done. And I will sing with joy because of you. I will sing praise to you, Almighty God. So join me in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, as one with creation, we raise up our voices. We sing our Alleluia to the Christ who defeated death. Amen. God of my past, God of my present and future. Yes, Jesus. God at my time, I'm changing forever and ever. Let every breath. Let every breath declare all your glory and power. Let every voice sing of your praises forever. From the mountains peak to the valleys low, from the ends of the earth, all creation sing God for rising from the dead. And this song will be offered to you. Hallelujah. Great is your love, as fast as the seas and the oceans. Oh, Jesus. My heart in your hands, the same hand that crafted the heavens. The word of the star Feel the presence of God. the form of creation. He is here with us right now. Your mighty name, Jesus, your name is salvation. Sing it out from the mountains. Peak. From the mountains. To the valleys low. To the valleys low. From the ends of the earth of creation. Hallelujah. his resurrection over death and in turn we declare our freedom from sin we declare our salvation from oppression we declare healing over all our land and we declare victory over all our battles because it is said in 1 John chapter 5 verse 4 we 
because every child of God is able to defeat the world and will win the victory over the world by means of our faith. And what is our faith? Our faith is that Jesus is alive and that He will raise us up from the dead. At the cross I come to worship My Savior Jesus crucified In sin and shame He came to save me You were raised from death to life I stand in awe In awe of your good I stand in awe of you. Oh, I sing your praise. Hallelujah. Death can never hold you down. Oh, the heavens roar. Hallelujah. Jesus, you have overcome. cross and I find glory. I see nails and I find freedom. I see wounds and I find healing. Your empty grave gave me life. I stand in awe, in awe of your great I stand in awe of you. Oh, I sing your praise. Hallelujah. Death can never hold you down. Oh, the heavens roar. Hallelujah. Jesus, you have overcome in your triumph I'll stand for your glory I'll sing and every battle every storm I declare your victory oh I sing praise hallelujah death can never hold you down oh the heavens roar hallelujah Jesus you have overcome in your triumph I'll stand for your Declare your victory In your triumph I'll stand For your glory I'll sing And every battle Every storm I declare your victory God is victorious. And friends, as we are in His presence, let us declare His abundance in our life. Ready? Today, I receive all of God's love for me. Today, I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today, I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today, I open myself to God's word so I become more like Jesus every day. Today, I proclaim that I am God's beloved. I am God's servant. I am God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Praise God. Friends, 
Welcome to our series, Best Preaching Ever. And this is our deep dive into the Gospel of Matthew. We are now in talk four, and that is entitled, More Than a Makeover. <laughs> More Than a Makeover. Have you ever been to a makeover? Or maybe you have had a makeover. I don't know with you, but as a coach, as a trainer, and as a facilitator of personal personality development seminars, I would do you. I would do makeovers. I will be using them to help people um, expand their understanding of self. And true enough, for some, it may be life changing, wonderful. I just make them change their wardrobe or so. Now. Um, I don't know with you, do you need a makeover? <laughs> I'm sure after this lockdown, all of us would need a makeover, don't you think so? Buhok pa lang eh, no? Hirap na tayo. But yeah, um, I, I believe that uh, this lockdown can ask us to have a makeover outside, outside, but I think it also forced us to have a makeover inside. It forced us to go on retreat, don't you think so? Suddenly, we are faced with ourselves, faced with the most essential of things. And I think that's also very important because a makeover on the outside realm is only effective to a certain extent. I don't believe all our problems are just skin deep. They go deeper. They hit the core. All right? And until we go inside, that's the only time we'll be able to find solutions to our problems. Brothers and sisters, we need more than a makeover. Uh, I believe we need to check the heart because we have heart problems. And that is why this is our message for today. Are you ready? This is our one big message and it is this. God is after your heart. God is after your heart. Believe it or not, brothers and sisters, He is. So, are you ready for our Bible study? Now, if you have a Bible with you, open now your uh, Bibles to Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 to 20. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 to 20. I'll be reading to you from the New Living Translation, the Catholic edition. Okay, are you ready? You're there? Let's all read it. Don't misunderstand why I have come. It is Jesus speaking right here. I did not come to abolish the law of Moses or the writings of the prophets. No, I came to accomplish their purpose. I tell you the truth until heaven and earth disappear. Not even the smallest detail of God's law will disappear until its purpose is achieved. So, if you ignore the least commandment and teach others to do the same, you will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But anyone who obeys God's laws and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. But I warn you, unless your, your righteousness is better than the righteousness of the teachers of religious law and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Wow, that's the word of the Lord. Friends, as we begin, allow me to start off with a prayer. Ready? And then in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Oh Lord Jesus, we come to you. We pray that you will bless us, transform us, change us, Lord, and make us new persons. Do this miracle for us, O oh Lord. Write your law into our hearts. Change our desires because we want to follow you, not out of obligation, Lord, but out of love. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, as we begin this talk, I'd like to uh, share with you my experience of Toastmasters. <laughs> Have you heard of that term, Toastmasters? No, it doesn't deal with wine. It doesn't deal with beer. And it doesn't deal with toasting, all right? Okay. Though we may have some celebrations where we may drink wine or beer and so have some toasting, Toastmasters is actually an international club. It's known as Toastmasters International. And um, understand that I joined that many years ago, but I didn't really like joining it at the very first time. Right. The very first time I, I was, in a way, what, uh, pushed, I was forced, I was coerced. <laughs> I was coerced to just join. You know, I was already a professor in the university then, and a colleague, actually a highly respected colleague, um, 
uh, an older colleague was um, inviting us all to join Toastmasters and and of course she was she convinced us and so we joined and I thought I would just be there for a few meetings but lo and behold we, she had us rounded up every week and she would ask us to do all the activities that was part of the Toastmasters program and in which you believe at that particular uh, uh, time um, the, the speeches would be um, as you know Toastmasters, maybe you don't know, so I'm telling you now, Toastmasters is all about public speaking. And we would be having speeches every time we'd be there. There will even be a time wherein they'll give you a topic and in a few seconds, you need to come up with a two-minute speech already. They would even, what, um, tally how many uhs and ums and, and, and repeated words that you would have. And oh my gosh, I would really fail in many times, but despite the pressure and despite that kind of suffering where I survive week after week, all right? I persevered, thank goodness, to my tormentor during that time. Now, understand, I initially, initially, I really didn't want to. It was so stressful for me. But later on, I'd like to really admit that eventually, I got interested. Eventually, because I was already a professor and later on I got into corporate life and uh, I needed to deal with people, I needed to speak out, I needed to address a lot of people. My experience in Toastmasters, how to do a speech, the most basic and fundamental things of communication taught there, helped me later on and in fact motivated me to to study more, to practice more. Um, in fact, the latter uh, time that I was with Toastmasters, I was already with what? I was already with speech contests. And thank God, I won national competitions and even became the governor of Toastmasters for Central and Northern Luzon. Wow, that was really an experience of mine. Now, friends, understand that at the beginning, all right, it was not good. But later on, it was great. And that's why here we have a picture of, uh, of me uh, joining one of the district conferences. I was a contestant there. I don't know if I won nationals, nationals there. But the point is, my mentor is that lady just beside me, you know, uh, Dr. Sonia Chan. And I owe it to her for, uh, I, I owe it to her for my my joining Toastmasters and being blessed by that organization. Probably you'd like to join too. But brothers and sisters, again, as I was saying, at the beginning, uh, I seem to have been regretting joining. But later on, no. No regrets what, at, at all because the basics that were taught were so important. That was a foundation taught for me that launched me to accomplishment later on in life. I owe it to Toastmasters that I'm able to speak to large crowds and crowds and even now being able to do all the seminars and do all the speeches that I need to do. Now, friends, why did I share that to you? Simply because it is similar to our spiritual story. It is similar to our spiritual journey in life. How? Remember once upon a time, you were... What? You were taught to pray, right? Now, you were taught about God, actually. And you were taught that our Father, probably, uh, uh, the angel of God, my guardian here, your guardian here, right? right? Uh, but one thing I'm sure, you were taught this, one of the very first, bless us, O Lord, in these side gifts. <laughs> Amen? Okay, so the prayer before and after meals. But friends, later on, uh, I'm sure you, you were also taught the Ten Commandments, you were taught to go to Mass, you were taught to read the Bible. Maybe some of you who were really forced to read the Bible, you know that B-I-B-L-E re represents what? Basic instructions before, and, uh, before leaving Earth. <laughs> before <laughs> leaving Earth. Or you thought that the Bible was a prerequisite to heaven, like an ethics manual. Quite uh, our experience probably would be what very conformatory, all right? Conforming just to do it, just to be able to survive, just like how I did Toastmasters before, just to survive all my speeches. And maybe we didn't appreciate all this teaching before, but now probably you got 
to see the light. <laughs> Maybe you've got to understand and, 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 and appreciate whatever you have now. If before you were doing all these prayers and being good, particularly because you didn't want to get punished, you didn't want God to, to see you wrongly and thus therefore not answer your prayers, you know, uh, you just avoided hell probably. But now, maybe after all of this that we're experiencing and maybe some of you, but the fact that we are communicating now in the feast, the fact that you enter the feast, maybe now you're not just surviving religious life, or having a, let's say, a survival instinct for spirituality, but rather something happened, and that is your encounter with the Lord. Suddenly you found that, what? God went after your heart, <laughs> right? Suddenly it meant some things, all these things, mass, prayer, suddenly were not just requirements, memorized prayers. They suddenly became sincere maybe a part really of your spiritual life because God opened your heart already. You experienced God's unconditional love and maybe some of you would be asking, wow, how can God really love me? And then you realize this, you want to love him back, you want to serve and you, you, you come to a better understanding of God. Now, brothers and sisters, this was also my understanding of those masters. At the beginning, it was just the basics. And later on, I found that it was much more than just public speaking. It was relationships. It was uh, self-actualization. It was blessing. It was serving other people. And so we now know that there are things that are deeper than what we initially may think of things. And so I'd like to go over the passage that I read with you before, uh, a while ago rather, and be able to understand what is the lesson that the Lord is trying to tell all of us today, all right? Let me go to the first part of that verse. Jesus said, Don't misunderstand why I have come. I did not come to abolish the law of Moses or the writings of the prophets. Now, Friends, um, understand that Jesus said this because there was a very big misunderstanding. The misunderstanding was this. A lot of people during that time thought that Jesus was, what, foregoing the law of Moses, meaning that he was ditching it out. He was not considering it at all, the law and the prophets. Now, why am I talking about the law and the prophets? Because the law and the prophets are the two pillars of Judaism the religion of Jesus. These are the two main bases of the faith of the Jews. And what are they? First is the Torah, all right? Now, what is the Torah? The Torah is um, referring to the first five books of the Bible. So when Jesus says Torah, it de deals with the first five books of the Bible known as a Pentateuch. What are these five books? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. All right, so um, if you're familiar with the Ten Commandments, understand that in the Pentateuch, there are not just Ten Commandments, there are actually 613 laws, all right, added, um, or rather, total of all the commandments. So an added 603 to the 10 of the Ten Commandments. We would just imagine that is the law. The, all the Jews were supposed to follow those 613 rules or 613 commandments. Now, aside from the law, you also have what? The prophets. And when we talk about the prophets, Jesus was referring to the prophets of the Old Testament. If you're familiar with the Old Testament, many books there belong to the prophets. And who are they? They are divided into two groups. The first are the four major prophets, namely Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Daniel. And the rest would be the 12 minor prophets. And who are they? Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. <laughs> Quite a mouthful, right? And um, the religious leaders would uh, really look at Jesus and it seems to them that Jesus was crapping the law, was crapping the prophets. Like for example, um, there was one time Jesus and his disciples was walking on a Sabbath day across a field. So we have a picture there and you will find that um, the, the Pharisees were very angry at Jesus and his apostles. Why? Because when they were hungry while passing through the field, the apostles were starting picking grain. 
to, to Jewish law, uh, you are not supposed to work on a Sabbath, and that includes picking grain. And so they were, they were questioning Jesus. If this is a holy man, bakit yung barkada niya, eh, eh, gumagawa ng ganito? Why are they picking grain on a Sabbath? So that's one of the violations they, that, that they found that they found out. Also, after that, you will notice that uh, if you continue reading the scripture, after that, a few hours later, uh, a man with a crippled hand approached Jesus and ta-da, Jesus healed him. But on a Sabbath, and instead of looking at the healing, the scribes, the Pharisees, were looking at the fact that why do you have to heal on a Saturday? Can't you heal on a Monday, on a Wednesday, on a Friday? Talk about their wanting to stick to the law, brothers and sisters. And so because of this, all right, they were, they were questioning. That was a misunderstanding that Jesus didn't want the Jewish law anymore, didn't want the prophets. He was ditching it out. But that is not true, as we read in the scripture, that he was a fulfillment of that. Now, understand that um, this can ex- be explained by... Uh, a person who understands much more the spirit of uh, the spirit behind the law, all right? But to many Pharisees, it was scandalous for them. But perhaps the most scandalous thing that that uh, bothered the Pharisees about Jesus is this, all right? Um, there was one time Matthew, yes, Matthew, the author of the gospel that we're going to study for the next two years, actually, all right? Matthew sponsored a party. And in that party, as you will see in this picture, you will find that there are so many people who joined that, but they were those that the Pharisees did not consider in a good light. Let's all read it from Matthew chapter 9, verse 10 to 12. Matthew invited Jesus and his disciples to his home as dinner guests, along with many tax collectors and other disreputable sinners. Take note, disreputable sinners. But when the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with such scum? Look at the words. When Jesus heard this, he said, Healthy people don't need a doctor. Sick people do. So you can just imagine with me, friends. So these blokes were, were, were there with Jesus. They were tax collectors, prostitutes, drunkards. And if you look at them, chances are they were violators of the law. Not just uh, uh, as per their, their title, if they were drunk or whatsoever. But I guess they would also be violating so many other laws that we know. How many laws again? 613. I bet these people, if that was a potluck party in the house of Matthew, some came up with Tupperware filled with what? Lechon. (laughs) Filled with pork adobo. Filled with what? Uh, uh, Probably gambas like that. Or shrimp. Okay. Well, all of these kinds of food, pork and all, that's all against the Torah. And they will most likely want this kind of food as against the Torah. And that's why um, many people thought that Jesus was abolishing the law, all right? But basically, it was not about that. Uh, The issue of the Pharisees is the kind of people that Jesus was with. He befriended the lawbreakers. He befriended them. And this was never done before. Understand that uh, no prophet before did that. And so they were very strict regarding this issue about Jesus um, staying or befriending these um, unlawful individuals. Now, I want you to freeze that thought, freeze that scene of Matthew, all right, with all of the scum of the earth, okay, with Jesus. In your mind for the moment, we'll get back to that story and let me just explain a little more. Brothers and sisters, understand that Matthew, when he wrote the gospel, his his version of the gospel, that was around 40 years after the death and resurrection of Jesus. All right? Now, despite that life, that, that time span, understand that many people still thought that um, Christianity 
or yeah, that Jesus was trying to ditch the Jewish law and the prophets, was not respecting that that mindset. And uh, that was prevalent. Why? Because around 40 years after Jesus' death, there were already other people joining the groups that were non-Jews. All right? These were what? If they were non-Jews, they're known as Gentiles. You and I, we're Gentiles because we're non-Jews. And so these Gentile Christians joined the movement to follow Jesus. But I'd like to say that they were foreigners. Remember, they were not Jews, so they were fo fo foreigners. And at, at first, they were just, they came in trickles, but eventually they came in tidal waves, you know? These were Greeks, they were Romans, they were the Ethiopians, they were even Egyptians who joined the Christian groups. They loved Jesus, but when faced with the Mosaic law, when faced with the Jewish custom, for example, of circumcision, wait, they may not like that. In fact, they may have hated it. And um, understand that circumcision is your birth into Mosaic law. It was how you become a Jew. All right, and so um, these people, they didn't like that. Uh, probably maybe because they just so much like pork chop, they like uh, calamari, they like all the seafood and the pork they wanted. And so uh, going into the Jewish custom was an issue. And so the Gentile Christians uh, were, were thought to also be against the Torah. All right. Another area of difference would be like they they wanted to wear uh, what uh, forty percent cotton and sixty percent polyester shirts uh, because uh, don't you know for the Jews you're not allowed to wear blended fabric. Wow, <laughs> blended fabric. Not pure, hundred percent cotton. Parang ganon. Well, no time to explain that. We'll have it for another talk. Long story, all right? But understand there's so many laws and restrictions in the Mosaic Law that many people who knew Jesus, who were not of the Jewish origin, were seemingly not wanting to follow the, the Jewish law. And so that was, that was a huge question now to Jewish Christians on their side. So why don't they follow? All right, so they would be asking this question, how can these foreigners follow Jesus but not the Torah? Let me um, give some light on this by reading our key passage. Jesus said, Don't misunderstand why I have come. I did not come to abolish the law of Moses or the writings of the prophets. No, I came to accomplish their purpose. Wow, so there's a purpose behind the law. I tell you the truth until heaven and earth disappear. Not even the smallest detail of God's law will disappear until its purpose is achieved. Key word there is until, all right? Friends, the law has a purpose, and um, that word until has a meaning. Let's look. Let's continue. So if you, it has a meaning, and it will only make sense when you read this verse, the latter part of the verse. And so if you ignore the least commandment and teach others to do the same, you will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But anyone who obeys God's law laws and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. There's still a continuation of this, and I know it's getting confusing, but hang on, all right? But I warn you, unless your righteousness is better than the righteousness of the teachers of religious law and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. So there is an implication leading towards the end of that phrase. That's why he's saying all of these things. It's because he wanted to emphasize that the law has a purpose and it should not just be up to the level of righteousness of the Pharisees. Lest we don't enter the kingdom of heaven. Now understand, these Pharisees were Bible professors. They memorized the 613 laws and uh, they wanted to follow them to the letter, you know, crossing every T, putting a dot on every I, all right? They were supposed to be the holiest uh, people around. But Jesus said, if you're just going to be like them, you're not yet part of the kingdom. In other words, you're not yet following me. I'm not yet your king. If your level of righteousness is just at the level of the Pharisees, which basically is just looking at the letter of the law and not the spirit of the law. 
Jesus is telling all of us right now, you've got to be better than the Pharisees. We've got to be better than the Pharisees. The Pharisees were just going to the basics, fulfilling things on a, on, on a basic level, but not understanding a deeper meaning of why these laws were being asked. And so, brothers and sisters, that's similar to me before when I just followed all the rules. And later on, I found out the reason why we had all the rules. And so, yes, if I followed the parts of speech and the, the, the parts of an effective speech, but later on digressed, then that would be okay because I have matured. I did not just have to do this. I want to do this. And that is also what God is wanting us to have in our relationship with Him. We don't just have to do religious things. We don't have to have a relationship with Him. We do these religious practices. We do have a relationship with Him because it's not a have to, but a want to. And so brothers and sisters, let me give you another um, question which will illustrate. Why do people go to school anyway? Do you have an answer? Why do people go to school? All right, here's an answer to learn to live in the real world. Don't you think so? That's why we go to school in a society so that we'll be able to live in the real world. So school had a purpose as the same the Torah had a purpose. Now, since it has a purpose and if that purpose has been fulfilled, then you're okay. In other words, if you finish everything in school, you don't stay in school all your life, right? If you're already 57 and you're still in grade three, there's something wrong. <laughs> you know, you have to graduate. Remember, you should graduate and you have to graduate. Nalala ko tuloy yung isang joke, no? Uy, graduate ako. Magna ako. Anong magna? Magna nine years na ako bago ako graduate. Uy, wag naman kayong ganyan, no? Na you will graduate as magna after nine years pa. But brothers and sisters, we eventually need to graduate and uh, start going to the next level of our life, probably working, all right? Now, let me define the law to you. The law, all right, uh, that we're talking about is this. It is a school of the heart whose purpose is to teach people to follow God in the world. Wow. So if you have something for the secular school to help us in life in general, the Torah, the law, the law of God is supposed to help us to be able to what? Um, to fulfill, all right? Uh, our following of the Lord in the world, okay? To, to what's this? To, the, the purpose is to, to teach us how to do this. And so, brothers and sisters, it is... Uh, the law is a school of the heart. Take note, it's not just of the mind, but it is a school of the heart. And at one point, you have to graduate. Um, when, you, when I learned public speaking, as I've said, I would just follow all the rules. But later on, I experimented, I adjusted. Um, I don't do things just because they are about the rules according to the rules, but now I, I speak, I do my speeches, I do my public speaking, all depending on the need of the people, all depending on the situation that's given. I may have other ways of doing things because I already know the basic and I know the spirit behind um, what I'm trying to say. So, brothers and sisters, um, same thing with our faith. We, we don't like to be, stay stuck in the basics, stay stuck with a quite rigid way of looking at things. Uh, the basics are important, but later on, as we already understand that, we go into a deeper understanding and we now know how to navigate ourselves. Friends, in other words, God is after your heart. God is not after you're just fulfilling the law per se, commandment number one, commandment number two. He, he wants you and me to create uh, a whole new world, a whole new life with what he has taught us. If we really understand his law, his love in our hearts, right? Then we also know how to apply it to the world and not just do it um, verbatimly, all right? Um, just to fulfill the rules. Brothers and sisters, 
even the prophets in the Old Testament knew that the law was not enough. Jew, uh, Jeremiah, Jeremiah, one of the major prophets, spoke about how God was going to make a new covenant between himself and his people, right? Let's all read that from Jeremiah. The day is coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and Judah. This covenant will not be like the one I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand and brought them out of the land of Egypt. They brought that co- they broke that covenant, though I love them as a husband loves his wife, says the Lord. Wow. So we are not limited to the, the law of before. Jeremiah says that there's something new that the Lord will be doing. And true enough, that was fulfilled in Jesus. Let's continue that verse. But this is the new covenant I will make with the people of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my instructions deep within them and I will write them on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. Wow. Wow. Friends, God is after your heart. God is after your heart. He's not just after your mind and your understanding of things. He's after your heart. In the beginning of my learning uh, of public speaking, I just followed the rules. But later on, I knew how to not really violate the rules, but understand why the rules are there and work with the spirit behind all of that. Um, Just like all of us, when we learn something, we need to know the basics. Before you get to form a word, you need to understand the alphabet. Before you get to get a sentence, you need to understand a word. Before a paragraph, then you need to understand a sentence. So same thing, brothers and sisters. We need to go beyond the rules. Let me end with a final illustration, all right? Now, I'd like you to imagine if there's a wedding. And let's say this wedding is between two uh, people named Rogelio and Amanda. So, so, Rogelio and Amanda, and they were already in front of the priest, and the priest was saying, Rogelio, would you accept Amanda as your lawful wife? That's big sumagot, see? Rogelio, suddenly he would say, um, I will feed her three times a day, Father. Nagulat si Father, nagulat si Amanda, no? Nagulat rin yung mga na- na- nakikinig, alright? Tapos sabi ni- ni Priest, ah, that's not the right answer, Rogelio. And so, he said, ah, okay, Father, I promise to treat her like a human being and not beat her up. I promise that I'm going to do that. So, not just did the priest and the wife get really surprised, but he was also surprised. The, the whole congregation was surprised with the answer of Rogelio. And, and the priest would, uh, would say, Rogelio, all that you said is good. It, 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 it is, it is uh, important. But they're just basic. If you're going to marry her, you're not just going to marry Amanda because of the basics. You will, you will marry her because you love her right? with all your heart. And so, Rogelio, are you willing to die for Amanda? That was the question of the priest to Rogelio. And so... Rogelio stopped for a while, started thinking, and he was quite confused. And after 30 seconds, he answered, Father, I promise to give her 27% of my time, 30% of my energy, and 26% of my money. (laughs) Seemingly, Rogelio didn't get it. I don't know if that wedding pushed through. But friends, that's the difference between the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. The Old Covenant was all about duty, the basic, the required. But the New Covenant, meaning the relationship between God and His people, right, is now not just because of duty. It is now about devotion. It's about devotion. It goes beyond the rules. And that is why I'm telling you now, God is not after your fulfillment of the commandments per se, literally. Yes, He is, but not just for the sake of that. It is because that through these laws, we become closer to His heart. Brothers and sisters, God is after your heart. God is after your heart. Brothers and sisters, as we now go towards the latter part of my talk, I'd just like to um, 
uh, just mention that we're going to get to worship in a short while and uh, I'd like to stick around because we're going to still after the worship still pray for one another we're still going to look into our thanksgiving prayers because there's good news and uh, that I'd like to share with you. And of course, we have several uh, several announcements for uh, the coming days, all right? So do stick around as we continue this talk, all right? Okay, good. So let's now go to the Gospel of Matthew, particularly at the latter part of his Gospel because someone, a scribe, one time started asking a trick question of Jesus. And what is that? Let's read it from Matthew chapter 22, verse 35 to 36. One of them, an expert in religious law, tried to trap him with this question. Teacher, which is the most important commandment in the law of Moses? Obviously, friends, it was a trap. The scribe wanted to uh, get Jesus to answer probably one of the 613 laws, pick that up and expound on that and hopefully with a discussion, catch him with something wrong and and blame him, uh, accuse him of a mistake that uh, they could use as blasphemy, all right? And so it was really a trap and thank God thank Jesus. Of course, he knew better. He didn't fall for the trap. He didn't pick any of the 613. He picked one of their daily prayers. And the daily prayer that they have is the Shema. Let's continue that reading. Jesus said, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. A second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. So imagine the entire law and the prophets are based on these two commandments. And what are the commandments? Love. Brothers and sisters, at the end of the day, the law is a heart issue. <laughs> that is why God is after your heart. Because He is after your heart. He's in it for love. We are all called to love him back. And God has his particular way of, of winning us back, of loving us. Jesus has his modus operandi of how to bring people to himself, uh, how to make people change, for example. You know how? His, his formula has never changed, and it is this. He loves them. In order to transform a person, to draw a person to himself, he just loves them. Friends, let me go back to the thing that I asked you to freeze in your memory, and that is what the story of Matthew, right? The party of Matthew with all the scum of the earth, where Jesus was uh, with the prostitutes, with all of these uh, tax collectors. You know, no Jewish leader has done that before. As I've said, no Jewish leader has done that before. In fact, the, the Jewish leaders at that time did the exact opposite. They were rejecting these people. They were condemning these sinners to hell. But not Jesus. Jesus befriended them, laughed with them, loved them. And through his love, they got changed. They got converted. Because here's the truth, brothers and sisters. The truth is, only love changes us. Because only love can reach the depths of our hearts. Amen? Amen. Friends, again, note that this party of... Uh, Matthew was not a one-time deal. I'm sure Jesus did several others with him and so many others with so many other people. Uh, so often would he throw these uh, parties that the Pharisees would accuse him of being a drunkard, of being a glutton. And because we know that, he was uh, a person who said, who shared a meal first before the message. He was a person who established relationship first before um, talking about the the gospel and uh, talking about the good news or talking about the, the message of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, uh, Jesus would set these parties off during his time and even up to now. I believe that he does still hold these parties of transformation, of love, of forgiveness. And you know what are these parties that exist in, even up to now? They're called... Eucharist. Amen. 
Yes, wherein he gives of himself and that we receive him and we experience once again his love. Brothers and sisters, do you obey God out of fear just because it's the law? Or do you obey God because of love? Because it is him. It is out of trust. Friends, if it's still out of the law, out of fear, out of just conformity, then I'd like to invite you to allow God to love you. Right here, right now, to, as we go to worship, allow the Lord to speak to you in a different way, not as a taxing God, not as a, a God that requires then something, but but a God who befriends you, a God who loves you, a God who you can trust, a God who is after your heart, not your hands, not your mind, not your results, but much more who you are. Allow God to come to you, to forgive you, to love you, to go after your heart. Because remember, brothers and sisters, God is after your heart. More than anything else, He values you. And so I invite you now to come to God to worship. And as you discover His love for you, His will for you, know that it is the best thing ever. That whatever He intends to do in your life is actually the best thing ever. And the best way for us to live our life is to let God have His way in our life. To let God take over. Because we know that His ways are higher than our ways. And we are just going to be overwhelmed if we let God take over. Let's pray, brothers and sisters. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Lord God, I trust in you. Increase my faith right now. Reveal to me your heart. Send forth your spirit to me. As I open my heart to you, I receive your love. Have your way with me, Lord. Your will be done. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let us come to the Lord.
And so, friends, as we ask the Lord to have His way with us, we will now give our, our dreams to our God. Ready? If you don't have your novena to God's love, just raise your hand and let us pray with and for you. Lord God, we come to you. We lift up to you all the hearts, all the hands of the people who have joined us today. We lift up to our dreams. We pray for your blessing. We pray for your anointing. We pray for your provision. And even now, Lord God, with your grace, by your mercy, we declare that all our dreams will come true in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, were you blessed by your online feast today? All of this would only be possible because of your generosity. Friends, we may not have a physical venue, a physical venue and physical uh, stuff that we need to do in terms of production, but we do have process production, we have editing costs, we have several other things that would still need your financial support. And so we'd like to to ask for your help, please help us continue holding these feasts online by giving to the following bank accounts that are now being flashed on your screen. Now, we made it easier this time for all of us through online channels of bank transfer, Paymaya, and Gcash. If you want a step-by-step -step guide uh, and detailed instructions, just go to www.feastvalleverde.com slash gift. Now, please remember to email a photo of your transaction slip to this email address, yourfamily at feastvalleverde.com. So we can send you, of course, our heartfelt gratitude. Thank you so much. Now, friends, the Feast's Little Acts of Love, our COVID-19 fundraising drive with other feasts, um, is still ongoing, friends. Our collective efforts in Feast Ortigas District has provided various hospitals and individuals with snacks, packed meals, and medical supplies. We are blessed to be able to do that. And so we'd like to invite you still. If you've been blessed with more, then above your tithes and love offerings, maybe you can send your donations to the Feast Little Acts of Love through these bank details flashed on your screen. This time, however, please email a screenshot of your deposit to this email address, feastpassingsecretariat at gmail.com. And of course, we will acknowledge you and bless you back with our prayers. 
again, to distinguish if it's for your tithe and love offering email, your deposit slip to your family at feastvalleverde.com. If it's for the Feast Little Acts of Love, then email your deposit slip to feastpassicsecretariat at gmail.com. All of these details are also at the caption of this post. Now, friends, we'd like to pray for you and we'd like to praise God for answered prayer. So we'd like to invite you to kindly forward your prayer requests and thanksgiving prayers by filling out the form at our website at www.feastvalleverde.com slash prayer dash request. Let's pray for these intentions. Lord God, we pray for stable blood pressure and sugar level for uh, our sisters, Josephine Santos, Jean Ignacio, and Celia Ignacio, Lord God. We also pray for continued good health for Ding Santos and all those who have various um, illnesses. May they continue to be strong and well alongside with all our, our friends, our servants, and uh, our attendees of Feast Valley Verde, Lord. Lord God, we also pray for the eternal repose of the souls of Estrella Contreras and Medalia Villanis. And we also pray for comfort for the loved ones they have left behind. In Jesus' name, amen. And we also pray, Lord God, for uh, someone who has to go back to New Zealand but had a longer stay in another country because of an implemented lockdown. We pray that she be able to uh, and be allowed to go to New Zealand soon and eventually come home to the Philippines before her visa expires. We pray all of this, Lord God, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. We know that we have answered prayers, that God answers prayers. Why? Because we do receive your thanksgiving prayers, brothers and sisters, and we thank the Lord for these things. From uh, John Frianeza, he says, I've been praying to have time for my family, and now I'm able to eat with and cook for my wife and kids regularly. So um, that's one good thing about this lockdown. So we praise God for that. From Brother Del Viola, he says, Praise God, my son is well after battling with COVID-like symptoms. Praise the Lord. All right. Now, um, he says that the doctor gave clearance that he may now come out of self-isolation. Yes. Uh, similar, similarly, there's another online attendee who says, Thank you, Lord, for the prayers of our intercessory ministry. My nurse friend in the U.S. tested negative for COVID-19. And also from one of our uh, attendees here, from Brother Luis San Buenaventura, this quarantine period allowed me to rise up from spiritual dryness. I've been focusing on and growing my relationship with God. And thanks to technology, I get to work on this in the comforts of, of home. Amen. Praise God for all of these good news. Thank you so much for sharing with us your Thanksgiving prayers. Now, please do keep on sending your prayer requests and your Thanksgiving prayers again at www.feastvalleverde.com slash prayer dash request. All right, please uh, do rest assured of our prayers for you. Now, Friends, we made it easier for everyone to find Catholic nourishment amidst these trying times. And so uh, we have put them in one page at our very own website. And this is Catholics on Quarantine feature of our website. Go to www.feastvalleverde.com slash Catholics on Quarantine for links to daily masses, words of encouragement, mental health care tips, activities to do, and other resources for spiritual nourishment. That's all there. So in line with this also, brothers and sisters, Feast Ortigas District has also launched various resources available at their Facebook page at www.facebook.com slash Feast Ortigas District. First, we have Food for the Soul. You spell food as F-O-D, <laughs> Feast Ortigas District. These are bite-sized reflections by the builders of Feast Ortigas District. And that will be at 10 a.m. from Monday to Saturday. So every day except for Sunday, 
one of us builders will be going live for 15 to 30 minutes to interact with you and to share some Bible reflections. Now, we want to continue to connect with you because we may be separated physically but not spiritually. So do set your alarms for uh, food for the soul or FOD for the soul at 10 a.m. from Mondays to Saturdays. I will be there every Friday, so wait for me. Uh, this coming Friday on April 24, I look forward to seeing you there, all right? We also have something for younger people, younger members of our family. Would you believe the awesome kids, our Feast Ministry for Children, is also holding online sessions. Would you believe? Again, simply go to Feast Ortigas District Facebook page to be updated with their weekly schedule. Our awesome kids online classes here, the children will have their own kiddie versions of our feast topic through art, through songs, or other fun activities uh, prepared by our teachers and our parents. We encourage the parents and guardians to have your kids join the awesome kids online classes after you've attended your grown-up feast sessions. Lastly, brothers and sisters, we also have worship sessions in our district. This will be uh, regular worship nights together with our music ministers and worship leaders throughout the Feast Ortigas district. We will have sessions dedicated to singing praises to God. So join us every Wednesday and also Friday at 7.30 at www.facebook.com slash Feast Ortigas District and you will join us for our worship nights, Wednesdays and Fridays. That's all of our announcements, brothers and sisters. And um, as an ending, again, I'd just like to say that we're going to resume, of course, our physical gathering once. Uh, it's okay already to gather and uh, the lockdown has been lifted. But meanwhile, please like and share our Facebook page and subscribe to our website so that you would be updated. Also, maybe you could write a review on our Facebook page. We'd love to read how the feast has been blessing you, especially now that uh, our sessions are also online and we have a lot of other activities also online for you. Friends, thank you for joining us today. We hope that you can join us next week. All the first timers, we hope to connect with you. And please bring more and more people to join us in Feast Valley Verde online. Remember, brothers and sisters, God is after your heart. Give it to Him. Amen. God bless you and I'll see you next week.